Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. And today I have a few tips for you for reading the works of Charles Dickens. So as I mentioned last month, and I think earlier this week, um, I am about to embark on a two-year read-along of all the works of Charles Dickens, um, hopefully taking many of you along with me. Um, so before I do that, or uh, as I am starting to do that, I thought it'd be nice to make a video with some tips for reading Charles Dickens, and um, some do's and don'ts for approaching the works of Charles Dickens, because I love Charles Dickens a lot, I think he's a hugely wonderful author, but I think some people find him very daunting, and I think you shouldn't, um, so I thought it would be nice to um, have a chat about Charles Charles Dickens and some good things to keep in mind when you're reading his works. Number one, don't take Dickens too seriously. Dickens is supposed to be fun and Dickens is supposed to be funny. I think because Dickens is a very famous classic author, we often think of him as um, a big kind of literary, fancy, highbrow author who is to be analysed and studied um, and all of that stuff. But that is not what Dickens is about at all and that was not what Dickens' aim was. Dickens was a really, really commercial writer. Obviously it's very hard to like assign to the Victorian period the same kind of like literary commercial divide we have to today. But if you were to do so, Dickens is very, very, very commercial. Um, Dickens wanted to write commercial novels that a lot of people would read, they were aimed at everyone, they were supposed to be good fun. The reason why they're very long is not because they're very serious, it's because they were serialised like a TV series. I watched a documentary a little while ago um, by one of the writers of EastEnders um, talking about how if Dickens was alive today he would absolutely be writing soap operas and I think he might be right. Um, Dickens' books are really commercial, really plot focused, they're all about various plots weaving together and um, with lots of interesting um, over-the-top characters. They are not supposed to be taken really, really seriously. You do not have to approach Dickens with your analytical brain on at all. Dickens is supposed to be fun. It always makes me really annoyed when I watch television adaptations of Dickens or film adaptations of Dickens where they make Dickens all like gloomy and dark and grim. Because obviously like Dickens does explore dark themes but a lot of the time Dickens is absolutely hilarious and really silly and really good fun and that is what I love most about Dickens. So that is my tip number one. Don't take Dickens too seriously. Tip number two, do you think carefully about where to start with Charles Dickens? Charles Dickens is a difficult author to know where to start with. Obviously my big mega Dickens read-along that I'm about to embark on um, is reading Charles Dickens in publication order, starting off with his novel The Pickway Papers, but that is not where I would suggest starting with Dickens if you are very new to Dickens. In general I think there are two novels which are the best novels to start with Dickens, both of which are slightly later books by him. One is David Copperfield and one is Great Expectations. The main reason why I always recommend these two books books as the best starting places for Dickens is because they're first person narratives following one character all the way through. One thing that people often struggle with with Dickens, we'll talk about this a bit later, is that there are often a lot of characters and a lot of plots and subplots all weaving together and it can be a little bit hard to follow and the great thing about David Copperfield and Great Expectations is that they're in first person, you're always following one character and that just makes them slightly easier Dickens to start with. I know David Copperfield is very long but I promise it is really accessible and I think these are the best two places to start with Dickens. I would also in general recommend starting with Dickens's later books rather than his earlier books. One slightly earlier Dickens that I do think is a decent place to start however is A Christmas Carol because A Christmas Carol is very short, very Christmassy and fun and you probably know the story from popular culture already and I feel like A Christmas Carol is wonderfully Dickensian in the way it's written so if you read A Christmas Carol and you really don't like the writing style you're probably not going to get on with Dickens because that is completely typical of how his writing style is. Um, I do like A Christmas Carol very much and it's very short and well known so that's a decent place to start and in terms of like Dickens's things that are in popular culture A Christmas Carol is a much better place to start with Dickens than Oliver Twist. The third tip is don't be put off by the length of a Dickens novel. Obviously many of Dickens's novels are pretty long and pretty thick. There are quite a lot of his novels which are over over um, a thousand pages. A lot of his novels are about three times the length of the average novel that is published today, um, but you absolutely shouldn't be put off by that. It's not because um, the novels are like really deep and dense um, or anything like that. The reason why most of them are so long is because they were originally published serially um, and so they have a lot of different plot threads, a lot of different characters weaving together. Like the length of it is more like binging a TV series as opposed to watching a film. Um, I don't think that's exactly what the 
experience of reading a Dickens book is necessarily, but I think it's useful to think of it that way when you're thinking about the length. It's not that it's a huge novel, it's that it's a serialised novel and that's just a different form. Don't be put off by the length um, and don't assume that Dickens's shorter works are the more accessible ones. Um, Christmas Carol, as I've already mentioned, is pretty accessible and great expectations, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend starting with The Old Curiosity Shop or Hard Times or A Tale of Two Cities, which are the other shorter ones, um, because I don't think they're as accessible actually as some of his longer books. Don't be put off by the length, um, they're really good fun, you just need to give them a bit of time. On that note, my fourth tip is do take your time. Dickens books are long and it's okay to read them slowly if you want to. If you want to sit down and read a Dickens book and read nothing else for the next two weeks or whatever, then that's absolutely fine, but you also might want to read a Dickens book slowly over a month or two alongside lots of other things. One of the reasons why in my schedule for the mega Dickens read-along I've given two months for most of the longer novels and one month for the shorter ones is so that we have time to read Dickens a little bit more slowly and digest it if we want to because Dickens's books are long and it's okay to give them time. What I don't recommend doing however is reading like a few pages at a time. I would recommend always reading a full chapter at a time and if you can read a serialised part at a time. So some editions of Dickens novels will list like the original serialised parts like the chapters that were published together and um, when they were originally serialised it's usually three or four chapters at a time. Um, some of them don't but it's relatively easy to find out online um, what chapters were published together and they make quite a nice like unit to read, put aside from it and read again. I have previously tried reading Dickens like serially a month at a time and um, I've done two serialised read-alongs like that but I haven't hugely loved reading it that way but I do think it is worth like looking up what the serialised parts were and like keeping them in mind while you're reading it because it is a sort of bigger unit than a chapter um, but a slightly smaller way of breaking down the book. And in general just remember that it's absolutely fine to take your time with Dickens and similarly like if you're taking part in the Dickens read-along you obviously can follow the schedule if you want to but don't worry if you fall behind a bit that's absolutely fine and um, we can still have discussions about it on discord as we go. My fifth tip is don't worry about all the minor characters and don't worry about following all the plot threads straight away. Dickens's novels are quite complicated and they often take quite a long time to get going. I mean like 10 chapters um, so if you don't know what's going on for the first 10 chapters don't worry it will come <laughs> the further you get on through the book the more you will know what's going on and also if you don't remember every minor character that's fine there will be some minor characters that do stick in your head and that you do like and there will be some plot threads that um they are sticking in your head more than others and you can follow them through the novel don't worry necessarily about understanding everything at the time as it happens don't worry about remembering all the characters don't worry about flicking back pages to try and remember when you last met that character you don't need to do that just enjoy the ride dickens is supposed to be fun also as i already mentioned dickens's novels were published serially and um, often over the course of like a year or 18 months which means that dickens was often expecting his reader to not have encountered a character or a plot thread for a while. Sometimes he brings a character back um, which he isn't expecting his reader to have read for like four months. So he will remind you who that character is because it's very much in his interest to make sure his reader remembers. So of course he wants to remind you who they are, which is one of the reasons why a lot of Dickens's characters are slightly more caricatured to make them more memorable. It's one of the reasons why a lot of them use like catchphrases or have like certain speech patterns which are always repeated. Um, that is a really good way for Dickens to remind the reader who hasn't met that character for a while who this character is. Dickens is trying to help you out all the way through. He knows there are a lot of characters. He knows it might have been a while since you last met them. So don't worry about getting them all straight in your head right away. You know, like I would not recommend like making notes or a character map or anything like that. Just like let Dickens take you on a good ride. Have fun. Don't worry too much about remembering everything. Okay, my sixth tip. Do remember that Charles Dickens is very, very weird. So I don't really know exactly how to explain this but Dickens is really odd. His characters are quite weird, there's some of them especially in his early novels are very caricatured and exaggerated and even in his later novels his minor characters are often more exaggerated than the central characters. His writing is really odd, he uses like really strange surreal similes and he really loves a list and um, I love a list so I enjoy it. Sometimes he just has like three paragraphs which is just like a big list setting a scene which I love but it's quite odd. If you read a Dickens chapter and you think it's really strange don't worry you're not missing something he's just weird. One of the things that makes his books fantastic is that they are really odd. They are not supposed to be realist, especially his early novels, but to be honest, all of them. They're not supposed to be realist. He does have a lot of social commentary in his books. He is commenting on real issues, but he's using exaggeration and parody um, to comment on those real issues. So Dickens is really weird and Dickens is supposed to be weird. Don't worry if you think Dickens is strange. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Tip number seven is don't get bogged down in the language or the cultural references. If you read a Dickens novel, you are not going to understand everything. You're not necessarily going to understand 
understand every sentence or every word. And that is absolutely fine. And that absolutely does not need to spoil your enjoyment of the book. I always think that one of the reasons why I love Charles Dickens so much is because I started reading Charles Dickens' books when I was 13 years old. And as a 13 year old, you just don't expect to understand everything. You don't expect to know what all the words mean. You don't expect to understand every sentence. So you don't bother looking things up in the dictionary. You just read it and enjoy it and have fun. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love Dickens, I think, is because I never got bogged down in the language because I started reading his books so young. There are a lot of fantastic editions of Charles Dickens' books that have a lot of brilliant endnotes and footnotes. Um, but to be honest, on your first reading of a Dickens book, I wouldn't recommend reading the footnotes or the endnotes. I wouldn't recommend looking things up if you don't understand them or Googling things um, or looking words up in the dictionary. I would just recommend reading it. You'll understand enough in context and you will have a much more fun reading experience if you just read it and let Dickens take you on the wonderful ride that all of his novels are. I think that people often approach um, Dickens novels and classics in general um, kind of thinking that they have to have their analytical brain on. They have to be approaching it like they were studying it in school. They have to understand every word and look everything up. But you really don't have to. Um, you can really get so much out of a classic and so much more out of a classic, I think, if you don't stop every time you don't understand something. You have to let yourself get into the story properly and you're not going to do that if you look up a word or a reference every single time. Um, Dickens, as I said, is a weird writer and sometimes he uses strange words and has fun with words um, and also often has like cultural references or references to like nursery rhymes and fairy tales and stuff like that. And also, as I've already mentioned, he was a writer who wrote a lot of social critique novels. So often he will be criticizing a very particular issue or particular law of the day. And you don't need to know all the background of that to understand the novel. Don't get bogged down in the language. It will only slow your reading down. I mean, you don't enjoy it as much. Just keep reading, plow on and you'll have a great time. Tip number eight is do try Dickens on audiobook. I highly recommend reading Charles Dickens's books on audiobook. And um, his books work fantastically on audiobook. Listening to Dickens on audiobook is a great way to make sure you don't get bogged down in the language and that you just enjoy the story and the characters. Um, but it can also be a really good way to keep better track of all the minor characters and all the plot threads because um, if you're listening to a good audiobook version of a Charles Dickens book then um, the narrator will do different accents um, and voices for all the different characters and um, which can make things a little bit easier to follow. Also Dickens does sometimes write to dialect out um, in unusual spellings which um, most of the time I find fine but occasionally can be a little bit tricky to follow um, and audiobooks are great for that as well. But aside from all those kind of logistical things listen to Dickens on audiobook is wonderful because Dickens was writing his books to be read aloud. He knew that a lot of his audience who would be reading his books wouldn't be able to read physically and would have other people read the book out to them. Literacy did improve quite a lot over the Victorian period but um, in the 1830s when Dickens was starting to write his novels literacy in England was about 60% for men and um, slightly below half for women and um, by 1870 when Dickens died um, it was at 90% for men and women so as you can see it did improve a lot over the Victorian period. Period. But certainly when Dickens was starting to write his novels, literacy was not that high in England and Dickens's books were written to be read aloud, partly so that people could read aloud his work to people who couldn't read, partly because he went around and did performances, did um, dramatic readings of his books at um, uh, concert halls, and also because reading aloud was a very common form of um, like family entertainment in the Victorian period. So instead of, you know, watching TV or listening to music, um, people in Victorian homes would often um, play music to each other or they would read aloud bits of books from each other and often they would read to each other and um, the later serialized monthly part of a Dickens novel. So Dickens's books were written to be read but they were also written to be read aloud and um, so they work wonderfully read aloud and I think Dickens is fantastic on audiobook. Like his use of language is just perfect read aloud and all his eccentric um, characters with all their unique voices work so perfectly read aloud. Dickens on audiobook is wonderful and I highly highly recommend trying his books on audiobook if you haven't before um, and it also might be a good way to get into Dickens if you're slightly struggling because some people do find um, things easier to take in on audiobook and as I said um, you might find it easier not to get bogged down with the language. Tip number nine is do try a screen adaptation if you're struggling. I know a lot of people um, feel that it is like morally wrong to watch a screen adaptation of a book before reading the book. I'm very much not one of those people um, and actually Several of my favourite novels of all time, several of my favourite Victorian novels of all time, um, I first experienced watching a screen adaptation before I physically read the book because, as I said, I got into a lot of Victorian literature as a teenager um, and I got into Victorian literature as a teenager chiefly through watching screen adaptations of Victorian literature. Um, so several of my favourite Dickens books, um, such as Our Mutual Friend and Bleak House, I had seen a television adaptation of before I read the book. Later, as I got more into Dickens um, and once I'd read a few Dickens, I 
firmly decided that I wanted to read the book before I saw the adaptations. I remember I like read Little Dorrit as a teenager, like the month before the television adaptation was coming out, because I still wanted to make sure that I read it before the adaptation came out. But I think for your first few Dickens novels, um, especially if you're reading one with a very complicated plot, or if you start it and you're struggling, then do try a screen adaptation, and it might make the novel easier to follow for you. I think one nice thing as well about watching a screen adaptation of a Dickens book and then reading the Dickens book is that because all of Dickens's books are so long they can never fit all of it into a screen adaptation which means there are always going to be lots of things that you don't know um, about and characters that weren't in the screen adaptation and new things to discover and then it's quite fun like seeing all the differences and seeing what they chose to um, include or take out um, and so you will get a new experience but you will also um, have a kind of steer towards the plot which I think is sometimes worth having and is definitely worth considering. There are many many wonderful screen adaptations of Dickens's books and um, a few particular ones that I would recommend would be the 2008 Little Dorrit, the 2005 Bleak House, the 1998 Our Mutual Friend and the 2007 to 2008 Oliver Twist adaptation, not the musical, the musical is not a good adaptation of the book and um, fun as it may be it like misses out very important things including the main villain um, I'd also recommend the 1999 David Copperfield I feel a bit more torn about recommending the 2020 David Copperfield to watch before reading the book because while I absolutely love that adaptation and I think it's maybe my favourite adaptation of a Dickens ever and um, it does play havoc with the plot so it might be a bit confusing if you watch the 2020 adaptation before you read the book. However one of the reasons why I really love the 2020 adaptation of David Copperfield is that um, while it does play havoc with the plot it completely um, encapsulates for me the atmosphere and the essence and the spirit and the fun of reading a Dickens novel like it is the only adaptation of a Dickens book I've ever seen which conjures the experience of reading a Dickens novel on screen. Um, I don't really know how to explain it but it's wonderful and I love it so maybe um, if you haven't read any Dickens it's quite a good thing to watch to like give you a sense of how weird Dickens is and it's excellent fun and I love it very much. I would also recommend the 1999 Great Expectations and um, which I really enjoyed um, but I would not recommend the 2012 Great Expectations which I felt was um, very grim and took all the fun out of Dickens so I wouldn't recommend that one but there we go. But anyway number 10 my 10th um, tip for reading Dickens is don't forget that it's okay if you don't like Dickens. Dickens is not for everyone. His books are quite odd as I have made clear in this video his use of language is very strange and his characters are often over the top and, and I completely understand why people don't like Dickens. So if I take my other two favourite authors Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gaskell I do not understand why people don't like Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gaskell especially Jane Austen. I don't understand how anyone can read Prime Prejudice and not love it however I completely understand how someone could read a Dickens book and not love it. There's so many things that I love about his books and um, but they are meandering and strange and they are odd and they do have a lot of crazy over the top characters and they do have a lot of interweaving plots um, that all come together at the end and they do have um, a really long beginnings um, taking you a long time to warm into the story and they do have really long endings which tie up everything and make sure everyone's married. His books are just quite odd but I also completely adore them but I also completely understand why people don't so if you read a Dickens book and you don't like it that's absolutely fine. It might be that you've read the wrong Dickens book especially if you started with one of his earlier novels I would recommend trying one of his later books um, but if you've read a couple of Dickens and you just don't get on with his books then you probably just don't like Dickens and that is absolutely fine. Um, it's important to remember when you approach a big very famous author like Charles Dickens that it is absolutely fine not to like his books because they are quite strange. However, I do love him very much and I hope you do too. So those are my do's and don'ts for um, reading the works of Charles Dickens. I hope this has been a useful and interesting video. I feel like maybe I should make these for more authors because it's been quite fun and I feel like I had a lot to say about the wonders of Charles Dickens and the strangeness of his books. So that's all for now. Do let me know down in the comments um, if you've read any Dickens, if you like Dickens, um, if you want to read Dickens in the future. Let me know if you're taking part in the Mega Dickens Read Along which is starting this month and going on for the next two years reading all of Charles Dickens' books in publication order. I'm very excited. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.